All right. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Keisha Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, and I'm super excited for having an amazing speaker for today, Karen Bennett Natraj. So, Karen will discuss how to live the life that awaits you. But before Karen comes to our virtual stage to talk about living the life that awaits you, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So we have old time listeners here and new ones. We just wanted to let uh, the new ones know that EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education, networking session during our Q&As and gratitude circle, where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. So we also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. And to download them on your mobile phones, just head on to Google Play or App Store and find Entrepreneurs INTL Network to get access to a lot of pieces of education. Mm -hmm. And I will put in the links to our chat right here so you can check it later. And if you go to our official website, eintalks.com, you'll be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you will be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly, highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get the access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event will run for 90 minutes and we'll have our speaker give her talk for 45 minutes. and. Um, and after that, we'll have a 15 minute Q&A portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 10.30 a.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our great speaker today, Karen Bennett Natraj. Karen empowers leaders and athletes to conquer mental demons, unlock true potentials, and manifest purpose. Her transformative programs, including the legendary Mental Fitness Boot Camp and Six Month Program. And so I'm so excited to have Karen on our stage to share with us her amazing talk and how we can benefit and how to live the life that, that awaits you in our business. So Karen, the stage is all yours. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for that amazing introduction and welcome everybody. I appreciate you being here and I'm so excited to share my journey with you. Uh, just to check, Kaiser, did you allow me to share my screen? All right, thank yes, you Yes, so you should be able to. I'm speeding down the highway. Tears are streaming down my face. Swirling thoughts are going through my head of what I'm about to do. The police car's siren wailing behind me yanks me into reality. As I look at my speedometer, I'm going 80 miles an hour in a 55 mile an hour zone. I immediately pulled over and I realized I have no idea how I got there. Have you ever done that? You got to your destination and you realize, how did I get here? Well, that's not being aware. And I was not aware that day. You see, I was heading to file a restraining order on my husband because he was abusive. He was like a time bomb waiting to explode. And I was so afraid again of getting hurt. It was like that fateful night when he threw a beer mug across the room and it hit me in the head. Blood gushing through my head, I rushed myself to the emergency room. And that was my wake up call because I had to tell the nurse what happened. I'd been lying to myself. I had an amazing job. We built a beautiful house and family. I was living every woman's dream, except I was miserable inside. Every day I gave advice to a friend of mine 
whose sister was in an abusive relationship. I had my blinders on. I was walking in that woman's shoes. One day, oh my God, I actually heard myself talking. Holy cow, who was I to give this advice? As I had my blinders on. But at that moment, awareness started to seep in. My blinders be started to come off, but those blinders kept my secrets safe. For me to live the life that awaited me, awareness needed to come in. Do you have your blinders up? When in your life have you had your kept your secrets? I'm going to share my PowerPoint with you. That was the moment. I'll have to share. Am I sharing this? Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, you are. Thank you so much. Pretty clear. That was the moment that I brought in these three core disciplines that I want to share with you guys today. And I called it my AAA insurance. And the reason is because I brought awareness, I brought acceptance, and I brought action. So awareness is the key to change. Awareness is the bedrock of transformation. It's the cornerstone of change. It asks us to invites us to ask these questions. What is it? What is happening? What are the facts and really what is the truth? Take a moment and embrace this, write these down because this will bring awareness into your life in any situation. Awareness is the key that unlocks the door to change. It demands courage. It demands self-reflection and a willingness to confront our deepest fears. And as you embark on this journey, you're embracing yourself to discover your true potential and step into the life that awaits you. With unwavering confidence, I stepped in to the life that awaited me. I became aware of the sabotaging thoughts that were holding me back. In the depths of my heart, I believe we all have the right to be happy, but I also know that life, I also know that the life we are meant to live awaits us and it's waiting for us to show up. As I began reflecting on my journey, I realized how my father was abusive and my mother swept secrets under the rug. <laughs> now I am in an abusive relationship and I slept, swept the secrets under the rug. In the book, Healing the Shame That Binds You, John Maxwell delivers a powerful message about how shame is transformed into our identity. It becomes toxic and dehumanizing. Toxic shame is your false self. And to be more of our false self, we become less of our true self. And toxic shame destroys the function of our authentic self. And boy, did shame engulf me. I'm ashamed I'm in an abusive relationship. I'm ashamed I can't even have a good marriage. I'm ashamed I'm picking these kinds of guys. I'm ashamed of what's wrong with me. And I'm ashamed of what are other people going to think my friends and my family. I'm ashamed I've been lying to myself. And at the bottom of my toxicity, a profound question rocked my world. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? 
And for me to answer this question, I had to admit that I was in an abusive relationship and the shame I brought on myself. Like the blinders on a horse limits its vision, my blinders limited my vision and the potential that was waiting for me in my life. It kept me numb. I tolerated the intolerable. And I had become a victim and had accepted a life well below of what I deserved. Are you living the life you deserve? That night in the hospital room, while my head was being stitched back together, the weight of my secret became unbearable. I felt so totally alone. The pain of my reality was worse than the pain of getting stitches. I am sick and tired of lying for him. And the first thing I knew I needed to do was get that restraining order because that was my ticket to happiness. So imagine your brain as a maze. We keep getting stuck. We get, keep getting stuck into these negative thought patterns and we don't even realize it because it's so habitual. And the main character in those thought patterns is your inner critic. It's our judge. That inner critic is the one that's telling you you're not good enough and you can't do it. This saboteur can be the most damaging to your self-esteem and your confidence. The thing with this inner critic, as powerful as it may be, he comes with nine saboteurs. So we have an avoider, we have a controller, we have a hyperachiever, a hypervigilant, a hyper-rational, the pleaser, the restless, the stickler, and the victim. So I'm sure maybe one or two of these might show up, think about it in your life, but just have that awareness. The four that showed up for me as I stepped out of this and through my awareness, number one was the judge. And that judge told me I wasn't good enough. Just stick it out, Karen, make it work because nobody else is out there for you. You're just not good enough. The next one was the pleaser. And that pleaser had me walking on eggshells because I was going to keep everything status quo so I wouldn't trigger him. But as that pleaser kept trying to please and make everything perfect and keep flattering him, it was draining my energy. And then my victim showed up and I withdrew from life. I withdrew from everything. But then as anger and resentment started to show up, my mouth went off. I was defiant. I was sarcastic and I was mouthy. I had wielded that sarcasm to counterattack by many stinging words. And with these saboteurs showing up, it became a vicious cycle because it continued over and over and over again. How often does your judge tell you you're not good enough? Just a thought. When have you found yourself attempting to please another more than yourself? In ourselves, we matter as well as others. It's sharing. When, does your, when in your life do you feel you're a victim to your circumstances? Don't fall into that. And maybe when have you felt suppressed anger, frustration, or even anxiety? Once you kind of discover how these saboteurs are showing up, 
you can call them out and you can make that real change in your life. And by doing that, I've created a book, an ebook for you that I'm going to down that I'm going to put in the chat at the end of this presentation. And this is where you'll learn about the saboteurs and your judge. And you'll have the opportunity to journal and explore where these sabotaging thoughts are showing up. And as you write and you just let that energy flow, you are empowering yourself to let go of those saboteurs and have a more self-fulfilling life. So this leads me into my next A in my triple A insurance, and that's acceptance. So that night in the emergency room, it hit me like a Mack truck. And suddenly I realized I could stop trying to fix him. It's about time I choose me. And at that moment, I chose me. For the first time in a long time, I was really awake to what was totally happening. And that opened the door for me to step into acceptance. I stopped pretending everything was fine. And I started walking into a journey of what was best for me. This allowed me to accept the fact of where I was at, file the restraining order as I made that decision to move forward. Now acceptance doesn't demand we like or we choose or we support our circumstances. It asks us to bravely just acknowledge it. Just acknowledge it. I acknowledged I was in a horrible relationship. And just allow it to exist. Accept the fact that you really cannot change the situation you're in. Acceptance is about making space for that reality as raw and as real as it can be. It's about giving yourself permission to be as you are, to feel what you're feeling and experience what you're experiencing without clouding your mind with anxiety or shame. As you incorporate acceptance in your life, you're inviting compassion and curiosity. So acceptance is the doorway to your transformation. It is facilitated by a sage. And the sage is your inner wisdom. It's your inner guide. The sage within you is your higher self. And it's the part of you that operates from that empathy, that curiosity, and the wisdom that's inside of you. Seeking the solutions that are beneficial to you and to others around you. Your sage has five powers. And the first power is the power of empathy. And this is the power of understanding your emotions. Understanding how you're feeling. Understanding really what you're feeling and how you're showing up. As well as and showing the emotion or understand the emotions of someone else. And exploration is the power of curiosity. We as children, do you remember how curious you were as a kid? You would just go exploring anywhere. Bring that back into your life today and be curious. Explore your potential. And innovation is the, pay, the power of creative problem solving. Working as a team with your work, with your spouse, with your significant other, anyone of moving forward in creating problem solving solutions. Navigation is about that power, is about finding that way forward. I found that way forward. 
I knew what my ticket was and I made that choice. And activation is that power to take positive and decisive actions. I took that decisive action as I stepped away from that relationship. When you can engage one, two, or even all five of these sage powers, you are disempowering those saboteurs that show up in your life. And this decision helped me move into my next A in the AAA insurance, and that's action. So moving forward wasn't just about running away from my old life. It was about stepping and shedding those beliefs, stepping into a new life and making new decisions. My three children and I sold almost everything we had to move from Arizona to California. And every mile we traveled, we embraced a brighter and hopeful future. But the road wasn't smooth and it wasn't straight because my saboteurs kept whispering in my ear, trying to pull me back into those old belief patterns. However, with the sage wisdom, I discovered the three tools that countered my saboteurs. And it was empathy, finding that love for myself, falling in love with me and feeling my emotions. It was curiosity. What is my potential and innovation? As the kids and I settled into our new home, my new job, their new schools, I was on this fast track to discover my purpose. I dove into self-help books and John Maxwell was one of them. Leaving the Enchanted Forest, Eckhart Tolle, Course in Miracles. I dove into everything I could with um, support groups, meditation groups, spiritual groups. But the profound question that rocked my world, who am I? It brought up more questions. It's, I had to discover what is it about me that got me in that horrible relationship? Why was I choosing that person? Why did I keep making those choices? It was about me that I kept needing and finding those red flags. And it was, why did I put the needs, really, really, why did I put the needs of others before me? Because back then I was trying to fix them. I needed fixing, not them. And what do I need to do to have a good married life? And this brought the power of empathy. It's about me finding my passion and exploring it. It's about me diving deep inside me and discovering the amazing person I am. And about me knowing what matters to me in my life and living a life filled with my potential that is waiting for me. My brothers invited my 11-year-old son and me, to participate with them on a fundraising ride with the MS Society. It was a 150-mile, two-day, fully supported event. After that event, I fell in love with cycling. I was curious about how far I could go. So I tried a 100-mile bike ride. I tried a 200 mile bike ride and I fell in love with it even more. I even went into a 1200 kilometer bike ride. 
This was powerful and liberating for me. Who would have known? Who would have known? How would I have known that I could ride my bike all over California? I could ride across France. And I even rode in the Alps of Italy and Switzerland. Through the power of empathy and curiosity came the power of innovation. Saying yes to my life and finding the inner wisdom and tapped into my own potential and discovering the gifts I have for myself and for others. My potential led me to being an ultra distance runner, an ultra distance cyclist and a swimmer. I have ran over 40, 100 mile runs, well over 140 ultra distance runs. I've cycled anywhere between 35 to 45,000 miles. And last year I swam 300 miles. Who would have known? Who would have known? If I had stayed stuck as a victim, of my circumstances and live the life well below of what I deserved, I would never have known my potential. Today, I am a powerful inspiration, leading others to embrace their potential and step into the life that awaits you. That is why I am a mental fitness coach and I empower ind individuals to implement the AAA insurance. The power of being aware of your saboteurs and really how that's holding you back and accepting and bringing in that sage perspective can move you in action into the direction of your potential. And that takes you saying yes to you. So let me ask you, what saboteurs are limiting your potential? What sage power can you embrace? And what small step can you take today to start living the life that awaits you? The power of change lies within you. It's saying yes to you. I said yes to me. The path to joy, purpose, and endless possibilities is just a decision away. I am continually moving forward in that vast potential of living the powerful life that is waited for me. I thank you so much for being here. I will put my free gift in the chat. And I'm so excited to have shared my story with you. works here we go i did it thank you everybody thank you kaisa thank you so much karen for that wonderful and inspiring talk all right so um uh thank you for that talk and uh let's head on to our q a portion so we encourage the audience to uh ask questions by raising their hands on the screen or using the raise hand feature here on Zoom, if you have any questions. Or you can unmute yourself if you can't find the raise hand option. All right, going once. 
<laughs> and going twice. All right. If uh, there is uh, no question, or if you're just shy to, shy to ask question now, maybe um, is there any uh, contact information that they can reach you, Karen? I downloaded my free gift. I'll put my email in here. Wonderful. I hope I can spell it right. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and put my glasses on. <laughs> no problem. Here we go. Um, all right. So if you have, if you all guys have any questions, um, feel free to reach Karen at Karen at the mindful athlete coach .com. You can take note of her email and her gift for us. Thank you so much for your generosity, for sharing that gift to us. So if uh, there's uh, no more questions on this part of the event, let's go to the last one. Our takeaways and gratitude circle. So uh, I can see that there's also a chat here who thank uh, Karen for her talk. But if you guys would like to share your takeaways that you had on this event, or if you want to give your appreciation to our speaker for today, uh, kindly raise your hand or uh, unmute yourself. So Peggy? go now i'm unmuted i just wanted to thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing your story and i'm sure that all of us recognize ourselves um, at some point in our lives where we have um, held back or we've been lying to ourselves and uh, it sounds like you have some uh, wonderful tools to help people so i just wanted to thank you for that Thank, Thank you, Peggy. Peggy. And yes, my, my passion is to help anybody, everybody to live to their potential. Thanks, Peggy. Very beautiful words. Thank anybody you. Anybody else? As for me, I would also just like to um, I agree with what Peggy said. Um, you, you've shared your vulnerability, and I believe that's important, with, especially with what you've mentioned, acceptance, um, to accept our vulnerability so we can face our weaknesses head on and to really go through a life, you know, and accept what is yeah. and see what we can improve on. I love that. Thank you, Karen. So I want to put out there, too, is if anybody uploads my free gift and if they have any questions and want to explore more of their saboteurs that I have another free assessment, I'd be love to get on my calendar and uh, talk to you about it. So, yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity. Yes. And we are the most privileged to have you here on our stage. And uh, once again, I would like to thank you for being here, for sharing your knowledge, your insight, your experience and vulnerabilities that we can surely take inspiration from. And so if uh, you guys would like to personally reach uh, Karen and share your takeaways personally, you can reach her out in her email at, again, karen at themindfulathletecoach.com. So, all right, thank you very much everyone for showing up at today's event. Our next event is going to be on September 12, 2023. And we are going to have James Elliott talking about hear people say yes to you more. Master the art of persuasion and influence. So to sign up for that, you can go to this URL, the link that I will put in the chat box. Here we go. And once more, thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you on the next event. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Karen. Bye-bye.